Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to the first Selling with Sanity Mental Health Reselling Podcast. So basically I put the feelers out there on Instagram and I had a good response from a lot of people um, who would really like to see a sort of a mental health inspired uh, tie-in with reselling podcast. So what's going to happen in this podcast? Well, I'm very aware that in my Thursday Talks episodes, I can appear quite rambly and there's not much direction. So there's going to be a lot more direction in this podcast and uh, hopefully once we get going a little bit more and we get some more questions in over the next few weeks, um, it'll become quite a nice little podcast for people who are either suffering with mental health difficulties within their reselling or um, or obviously maybe just would like to hear a little bit how uh, people with mental health uh, difficulties do actually cope with them um, in a reselling setting. So obviously I'm going to be talking a little bit about my own mental health issues. I'm going to be encouraging people to get in touch and if they would like to, they can share their story with me and I can obviously broadcast that on the podcast, whether that be anonymously or if you would like to me to share your name, I can do that. Um, if you wouldn't like to share anything about your personal situation, that's completely fine. Obviously, just listening to this podcast will hopefully help you out a little bit, just seeing what other people have to say, seeing what myself has to say um, and the problems that everyone's really dealing with. Um, If you would like to share any coping strategies or anything like that, please do get in touch and obviously I will add them into the podcast at a later date. Um, As you can see on the screen, we've actually got a social media link. So I've got my Facebook and my Instagram on there in particular and you can contact me through those Facebook and Instagram links um, and obviously then uh, we can discuss anything you would like relating to mental health and reselling if uh, obviously it's being directed at this podcast or if you would just like to talk about reselling then that's fine by me or whatever you'd like to but obviously if you're listen- listening to this podcast I would imagine you'd want to talk and open up a little bit about your mental health issues. Now there is something that I don't really know how to conduct myself on within this podcast and that is um, being politically correct and how I should actually say uh, mental health and how I should, uh, how what words I should use when I'm describing it because I often think mental health issues or mental health disorder has some sort of a stigma attached to it and um, obviously it, it can come across a little bit, um, I don't know, I don't know what the word is, a, a little bit sort of condescending maybe or um, just it, it makes people feel who have these issues uh, like they're they're not normal, and I don't think that's a good thing to do. So I don't know quite how to to word these uh, phrases, but I think that I'm probably just going to go with uh, mental health uh, difficulties or something like that, not to obviously um, make people feel not normal or inferior or anything like that. Obviously, I myself, who's talking right now. I have mental health difficulties, even as I am recording this podcast, I can feel my anxiety bubbling up. So, just so you know that I'm in that boat with you, uh, but obviously I do want to get things uh, politically correct in, in the sense of the wording. But anyway, so in this podcast, the first podcast, we are going to be talking about buying stock. So, I'm going to get onto the topic in a second. But also, as I say, I just wanted to let you know that obviously I want to build some community around this podcast. I want people to get in touch. So if you do feel like you can get in touch, please do visit the social media links and just get in touch with me. And obviously we can build a community around this podcast and help each other get through these issues. So first off, we're going to be talking, as I say, about buying stock. So basically, the the Things I suffer with when buying stock. So, basically, when I'm buying stock, I find it quite easy to go to the car boots or to, um, you know, go to the charity shops and things like that. However, I do struggle with sometimes getting there, actually going, driving there, 
and go into the charity shops, things like that. I don't necessarily struggle when I'm around the charity shops. Uh, like most people, I absolutely love sourcing, but particularly getting there, driving there in the car, that can be an issue for me. It's obviously a trigger with my anxiety. And also, another big one is auctions. I do not do auctions in person. So what I mean by that is I only do auctions online. So I only bid online because um, if I went to an auction, obviously an, an auction is a very um, exhilarating place, very exciting. And one of the issues I have is that I actually associate my excitement with anxiety. So I, if I get excited, I will straight away get anxious. There won't be a distinction. So essentially that's quite sad because it means that I feel as if I can't get excited because I will get anxious. And obviously I choose my words carefully in how I say that because I say I feel. I feel I can't get excited. It's not that I can't get excited, it's that I feel I can't get excited because of my anxiety. So I do try these days to choose my words carefully and, and not use the word can't too much. Obviously I always try and say to myself, I find it hard to do this and then that will help hopefully in time uh, make me think, you know what, actually yes, I did find it hard to do this, but now I'm in a more comfortable position doing this. So, uh, yeah, it's buying stock for me, um, there's two sides to it. There's a really, really nice side where, you know, it's lovely, you'll go to the charity shops, you'll go around the car boots, you might even have a chat with a few people. Now, obviously, it's important to know maybe you have social anxiety, and I don't have that as much. Um, if I'm in a crowded room or a space with a lot of people, yes, I will get quite bad anxiety. But um, generally, if I'm out and about and I'm seeing just a few people, or, or even if I'm in a crowd but I'm in an open space when I'm outside in nature, things like that, I'm usually okay. But obviously, if you have social anxiety, that is a different beast and maybe... Um, you might not, the things that you find hard will be different to the things I find hard. But generally when I'm at the car boots, when I'm at the charity shops, I'm okay. Um, but then when I'm driving there, as I say, I can't drive for over 20 minutes without getting quite anxious. And it's a, um, it's a sad thing again really because it's something that I've put on myself um, that makes me think that I can't do that when... I can do that. It's a restriction that I've placed on myself. So, why when I'm when I'm buying stock, why is it so hard for me to do that? It's so hard for me to do that because if you if you've not got a mental health issue, you may not know about some of the symptoms, some of the things that uh, come up come up when you are anxious or when maybe when you're depressed. I mean. I've never had depression in a, a big form before, um, but I've had it in a milder form. I understand it, but I can't necessarily empathise completely with people. However, I do know what it feels like to wake up and not feel like there's any life in the day. You you wake up and you just feel like, what's the point? I'm, I'm, I'm getting up just to go back to bed, essentially. I understand that. I've experienced that, but as I say, I've not experienced depression in in its really severe form, um, which I am quite grateful for because obviously depression, anxiety, all these different things are very, very hard and I just don't think I could cope with maybe having depression and anxiety as a person myself. Um, obviously, if you're dealing with that right now, maybe it's best to get to seek some professional help because obviously um, if you're dealing with a few different issues it's definitely worth going down that route getting a little bit of professional help talking to people and getting through these issue issues on a sort of a one-to-one -one basis with someone else but also um, in a slow and steady manner that'll help you get out of these issues nice and slowly and it's important to state as well that I've over four years I've had anxiety I've learned not necessarily to be fighting it, but to be accepting it for what it is. Because 
essentially my anxiety will always be with me in in one form or another um it's just about ho hopefully at some stage being able to tone down that anxiety and not let it affect my life in the way it does but let's say i'm doing an auction um obviously even if i'm doing it online I really, really struggle. Obviously, I get anxious, I get sweaty palms, I get things like that. Obviously, I could go into detail on, you know, uh, heart palpitations and all that sort of stuff, which I don't particularly like to do. I find that actually talking about my anxiety in a big way is, is something hard for me because it makes the anxiety come out more. But I think it's something that's necessary to talk about it. Because if you're con if you are scared or if you are fearful to even talk about it, then you might not be able to get through it in in the best way possible because you're not truly accepting it. So, um, but generally, if I'm doing an auction online, I won't get too anxious these days. But there is definitely a, a hint of that excitement there. Um, and that obviously converts into anxiety for me. Um, now, I know that someone asked on Twitter, I'll just, um, I'll just get the uh, sheet actually one second. So I know someone asked on Twitter, where is it here? Blue Rose Resells. It would be good to see if anyone is willing to share their coping strategies. So again, if you would like to get in touch with me, if you'd like to share a few of your coping strategies for depression, anxiety, anything like that, um, then get in touch and obviously I will uh, share them on the podcast if you would be okay with me doing so. Um, but basically a few of my coping strategies, obviously if I'm in the car, um, it's very, very hard to cope in a car my, my anxiety relates to feeling trapped uh, which is a lot which is which is very common when when you talk about people who are anxious or depressed or anything like that it's generally this feeling of feeling trapped and you're not you you don't see that fulfillment in your life you don't see that you maybe don't even feel uh like the sky is the limit you feel quite trapped you feel quite vulnerable um all those sort of feelings that bubble up and um, for me if obviously if I'm in the car it's hard it, I mean generally I just have to get through it and I have to get to the the place where I'm going I have had a panic attack in the car before with people in the car that was not nice um, I mean this is when I was uh, when I say I've had a panic attack in the car I mean when I was actually driving the vehicle um, and that is not nice so if you have had uh, if you've been in that situation yourself, um, I really empathise with you and, you know, I hope that um, it doesn't happen again for you because it is a pretty scary situation because you've got control of that vehicle and also if you've got people in that vehicle, you've got control of them as well and if you've got, you, you've got to deal with a panic attack, it is a very, very hard thing but generally, I try and get to my destination, I try and stay calm I try and stay as centered, centered as I can in the car. If I'm in the passenger seat and I'm not feeling very well uh, or very good, then it's a little bit easier for me. Uh, obviously, I can I try and go on my phone a little bit, but the phone can be a hindrance and a godsend kind of thing. It can be in between. Sometimes it can be really good and it'll distract you. Other times it can be really bad and you just it doesn't distract you enough or uh, maybe you see something on your phone that might be a trigger for you, might be an anxiety trigger, and um, obviously then uh, that definitely doesn't help. But once I'm out of the car, I'll feel a lot less trapped, and then I can get on with sourcing, so I can go to the charity shops, I can go to the car boot, wherever I am. And it's important to note as well that sourcing in reselling is a huge remedy for anxiety in most circumstances obviously for me with the exception of actually going to a physical auction uh, where the bidding and the the crowd and all that would get me too too anxious but generally charity shops things like that are a big big help now um if you are going around the charity shops obviously what this does is it gives you a level of distraction from your anxiety now it's not going to be a permanent fix, getting a distraction from your depression, your anxiety, whatever it is. Now, as I say, 
I can't really comment too much for depression. However, I did have a comment uh, on Instagram saying, could you touch on other areas, not just anxiety? So I did want to touch on that. Um, so obviously I can't comment too much on depression. However, my anxiety in its early, early days, when it was very, very bad, uh, it gave me somewhat of, of residual depression in, in a small form. Um, and going to the charity shops, I did realize that basically uh, actually going to the charity shops would alleviate that depression somewhat. Now, as I mentioned, it's only a short-term thing. It's only a temporary thing. So you need to be aware of that. Obviously, you can use these things um, to an unlimited amount of, well, you could use them on, uh, to an unlimited kind of time uh, frame. Uh, you can constantly go to the charity shops, you can constantly go sourcing. So it is a short-term fix, but it's one that can be repeated, which is good. But at the same time, you've got to learn to not only distract yourself from your anxiety, but in one way, accept it and embrace it and and help get through it in, in a more uh, solidified way. And that may come differently for different people. You may be able to do it on your own. You may need to seek professional help. Uh, you you may even get some inspiration from me talking on this podcast, and hopefully you do. Um, but obviously, solidifying it, helping it in a stronger way, uh, is going to come from uh, different things, more solid things, rather than just distraction. But distraction is a big thing, and it can really help you. Um, the other thing that is important to note as well, that is a big thing for me, is actually milk. Uh, and I know that sounds kind of odd because why milk? Um, but I first um, I first realised this, I would say, 6 to 12 months after I first had anxiety. I know that's quite a wide range of, uh, uh, of a prediction there of when I discovered it, but I, I really can't remember, but it was sometime in that range. And um, I realised that it calmed me down a little bit. Um, and I also discovered quite early on that walking helps me massively. Now, for you, it might be running, it might be uh, it might be tennis, it might be something else. But generally, exercise and food on the whole are really, really good. Again, these two are short-term things, but again, they can be repeated over and over again. And what I started to build up in my mind was timings during the day. Now, I can't say that this is a good thing to do to fight your anxiety. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's what I, this is what I did. Uh, now, if you went to a counsellor, maybe they would say this is not a good thing to do. However, what I did, uh, just to elaborate uh, on, on my situation and where I was, was I built up about four or five different coping strategies and I would put them into place strategically throughout the day. So that would be food, uh, exercise, and then generally the other one would be a shower. Shower would really, really help me. Again, for other people, it might be a bath or something like that. It might not even be a shower. It might not be uh, cleanliness. It might not be anything like that. Um, but the shower and then obviously distraction in doing something I love in, in, in with regards to my work, um, you know, reselling, things like that. And I would put these into place strategically throughout the day. So I'd go for a walk at sort of 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. I'd go for another walk at 3 o'clock. I'd go for a shower at 7 o'clock. Um, I would have my, my meals and I would also have snacks in between uh, when I was just feeling a little bit um, a little bit fragile, let's say, a little bit like I was going into that anxiety spiral. So uh, generally, thing I would have for my snacks, I'd have hummus, I'd have breadsticks with the hummus, and I'd have milk. Uh, the reason why I would do that is because the milk obviously uh, massively helped me. I don't particularly know why it helps. I don't know whether it's something to do with the uh, lactose in there. I'm not sure. I really, I really don't know. Um, but apparently it, it it does just help. I don't know whether it's been scientifically proven to help, but I have uh, seen on various different websites that a lot of people have got help from milk. So yeah, that's a good one, and I still use it to this day. But I don't actually use it to this day for generally, uh, for 90% of the time, I don't use it as a coping mechanism. 
I drink milk because I enjoy drinking milk. Um, and that's, that's very uh, positive because I've gotten out of that need to drink milk and actually now I just drink it because I want to drink it. And it's always a good point to get to get onto that. To with these coping strategies, at first use them because you need them. But maybe slowly over time you might realise that actually you don't necessarily if you can break that anxiety somewhat with that coping mechanism or that coping strategy, you might realise that actually you're starting to need them less and less and you end up just doing those coping strategies because you love doing them. I take a shower now, not because I'm really anxious and I feel like I need to get in the shower to calm my anxiety down, uh, which is what happened at the, at the first point. I would, I would get very, very anxious before a shower. I'd have a shower and then the, water, the, the hot water would calm me down. Uh, but now, I don't do that. And also, I had um, something where I would have to go for a shower at a certain time. Now, this timing thing, I would be careful because... It can be a double-edged sword. You can, you can think to yourself, right, I'll do this at a certain time and it will help you. But then you'll start to not be able to break that time and you won't be able to, uh, to live your life in a certain way because you have to go for a shower at seven or you have to have a snack at three. Um, so try and do that first off. But if I was going back on myself, I would try and say to myself, be a little bit less um, paranoid or whatever you'd like to call it with the timings of when you're having these things because that was a destructive thing in a way but I've kind of got out of that a little bit but certainly the coping mechanisms are fine it's just when you're having you feel like you definitely have to have them at a certain time that's when it can be a bit more destructive but again it, that can help in the short term so uh, that's just my experience with that, but um, generally when I um, have got stuck, when I'm getting back to the sort of reselling on this podcast, um, when I've got stuck, I uh, like when I've just got a haul from the car boot of a charity shop, I feel this real sense of fulfilment and this sense of being uh, full. So what I mean by that is not on a physical sense, obviously, but on an emotional level, I feel like I'm satisfied. I feel like I've got enough stock. And that in one way calms my anxiety down because I feel like uh, I've just bought a load of stock. I feel happy. Now, another thing I wanted to touch on is going around people's houses. I've done this quite a lot. Um, I've gone around one particular gentleman's house quite a lot. He's a good friend of mine, really, really uh, nice bloke. Um, however, I do still feel anxious when I'm going round there. Now, there was a time that I went round and I was very, very near to a full-blown panic attack in, you know, in his house. Um, and I thought, I'm not going to cope with this. Um, I, you know, I, I, and it wasn't necessarily because of anything but myself of building this up and letting it take over me a little bit. Um, but obviously, I was in his house. Um, there was loads of things laid out, ready for me to, to buy. Very, very happy, happy moment, really. Um, but obviously, I was just getting a bit anxious because um, it's that thrill of the deal. And as I mentioned previously, my excitement um, basically translates into anxiety immediately. It's something that I'm working on at the moment to try and disassociate excitement with anxiety so that then I can get my life back and... Uh, move forward and do things that I feel are exciting in my opinion without being too anxious about them. Um, so obviously I've got the thrill of the deal there, I've obviously turned up, um, I've not been very good in the car when I've been getting there so that's not helped. I've drank a little bit of milk before I go in and um, I then go in and um, basically I am getting more anxious and um, obviously as I say it's the thrill of the deal there's plenty of good stuff on the table and I'm wanting to get the deal done because I get anxious. It's like everybody. It doesn't matter if you have a mental health disorder or not. Um, you know, you get you get anxious when... Well, not anxious, but you get excited when there's a deal to be done. And then when you've done the deal, 
everything just calms down. So I, in that situation, trying to get the deal done, and I do get anxious. Now, there's not much I can do in that situation. That's the feeling where I feel trapped. Obviously, I can have my milk with me. I can have a few different uh, things to help me a little bit. I can ask to go to the toilet. I feel that that's always a good one. Even if you don't need the toilet, generally I need the toilet when I'm anxious anyway. I don't know why that is. It must be a, a bodily system where you need to go to the toilet when you get anxious. I don't know. Um, but just ask to go to the toilet and you know what you need to do. When you're in the toilet, take a minute. Take a minute and wash your hands. Now, this helps me massively. I take the break to the toilet. Now, suddenly what you've done is you've stopped the anxiety getting worse because you've you've highlighted a specific break in that deal in that negotiation if you're at someone's house you've highlighted a specific break you go to the toilet if you need the toilet you go to the toilet and then obviously like you would you wash your hands if you don't need the toilet still wash your hands because this is a big big thing if you go to the toilet or if you don't go to the toilet just wash your hands take a minute just even pour a little bit of water over your face. Just do that. Calm down a little bit. Just for a minute. If you have to stay in the toilet for a couple of minutes more, just maybe even just do it. I don't particularly think pacing up and down helps a lot. Uh, I don't know whether it's a destructive thing to your anxiety or whether it's a good thing. Uh, obviously, you'd have to get a professional opinion on that. Um, but I would, I would maybe do a little bit of sort of pacing, but not too much because I don't want to, um, you know, take my anxiety up too much either and then I'll go out the bathroom and I'll feel just a little bit better and then obviously we can t continue with the deal and I try and focus on the deal we're doing. I try not to focus on my anxiety and I try and say to myself, look, I love what I do as a job. I love my reselling and what I'm doing right now is getting stock and I absolutely love getting stock. So why why would I be anxious about this? And I think this in my mind, and it sometimes just helps me to calm down a little bit. Then once the deal's done, I get outside, I get the stuff into the car, and I'll always have five minutes in the car before I set off. I'll have a little bit of drink of milk, and I'll just breathe a little bit and just help me relax before I set off home. And generally, the car journey home is a little bit better because I'm not as anxious because I've done the deal, everything's cool. I'm, I'm happy and I'll get home and I'll get the stuff away. I put it into my accounts and stuff like that. And generally, I won't do any work for a couple of hours because I need that break. I need I need a little bit of rest. I'll do something fun. I'll, I'll watch a video that I want to watch on YouTube. I'll go for a walk if I need to go for a walk and just, just chill out. Uh, now, as I say, this is a while ago now. I'm not as bad when I do it these days. I went around someone's house uh, same gentleman's house actually the other day and I was so much better than I was a year ago or even just a few months ago when I visited him last. So I know that I'm slowly progressing, I know that I'm getting better. Obviously I'm having counselling at the moment, I am actually getting professional help and that's helping quite a lot work through some of the issues. Um, but yeah, so the, the other last thing I wanted to touch on before we move on uh, to obviously, uh, I wanted just to do a quick quote uh, and then I wanted just uh, to obviously highlight uh, any questions and things like that. Um, so the last thing I wanted to highlight about buying stock is actually um, commitments that make you feel uh, overwhelmed or too like they're too much. So I've done this so many times in my reselling uh, and obviously my anxiety affects that um, is doing having these commitments and making these commitments uh, to people or to places that you have to go to them and if you do not go to them you've failed that is not the, the correct thing to do don't if i if i were you don't um make these commitments uh set in stone say to yourself you know what i can go to the car boot on sunday i'll get some nice stock but if i don't go to the car boot on sunday I'm not going to worry, I've got some stock at home, or I'll go to the charity shops on Monday or Tuesday or something like that. Don't don't create a commitment and big it up in your mind so much that you have to do it, and if you don't do it, you'll fail. Every time I've done that, 
have either gone down into an anxiety spiral and had a panic attack, um, or, like, if I do the actual thing, or I just don't do the thing and I feel down, I feel like I failed, I feel like um, I'm not enough, I feel like I'm worthless, I feel like um, there's no life left in the day. Uh, you could even say at that moment I do feel a little bit depressed, um, but I don't particularly like, I, I feel like depressed is such a strong word, and I don't particularly like using it for things that are maybe a little bit trivial, um, so I always kind of use that word, um, what's the word, I suppose I use it lightly, I try and use it in the correct way, but I do feel quite down after I do those things, so if you, you know, if you want to go to the car boot, say to yourself, right, I might go to the car boot on Sunday, don't give yourself a definite answer, and if even if you're in the car, or if you're getting a little bit anxious about going to the car boot, because for me personally, I love going to the car boots. It's only the journey there that gets me, the journey in the car. Um, but for you, it might actually be that you get anxious at car boots, and that is a part of your anxiety that you have to deal with. Obviously, there is a route, uh, a route deep down that you love car boots, but you get very anxious at them because maybe you associate excitement with anxiety like me. Um, but if, you, if you're feeling like that, don't overwhelm yourself. Maybe just try and get in the car first off. If you, you know, get up, that's the first step done. You've got up, you've done that, that's the first step done. Get up, maybe put, get dressed, get something to eat if you'd like to. Get in the car maybe and just take it a slow process. And if you have to turn around 10 minutes before you get to that car boot and you have to go home, do that but don't feel like you've failed because you haven't failed. There's always tomorrow, there's always gonna be tomorrow. You'll always be able to try again and you know, it's just gonna, it's gonna help you in the long term not to put that level of pressure on you um, to be able to um, obviously in the long term get a little bit more better, a little bit more uh, sound of mind without trying to obviously uh, belittle anyone with saying that. Um, but obviously, it'll help you get to a better place within your mind in the longer term, um, and and then you you won't be as worried, you won't be as feeling like you've failed all the time. I think that we put too much pressure on ourselves to do all these things, and we don't need to put that pressure on um, for for our health, for our um, long term growth uh, with mental health and. Um, for our long-term growth as even resellers because it directly affects how productive we are going to be as resellers, uh, the state of mind we are in at the moment. So if we're not in a good state of mind, then that's going to negatively impact um, what we do. Now, um, you could get home um, after maybe uh, trying to go to the car boot but not forcing yourself to do it you could get home in that instance and you could be a lot more positive to get on with the day because you've not forced yourself to do it, you've not put loads of pressure on yourself to do it um, and then you'll get home and you might be a bit more positive whereas if you put a load of pressure on yourself to do it and then you don't even achieve it then you're going to get home, you might even want to get in bed, you might want to just do nothing and you won't be very positive. So I think it's important for both the short term and the long term to not put these these commitments uh, fully on yourself with pressure. I think that you need to just let go a little bit and I know that it's very hard. I hate myself for saying that because people have said that to me. I mean people have said when I am had a panic attack, are you okay? And it makes me feel so just rubbish, just absolutely rubbish because no, I don't feel okay and that's just going to make me worse. And the other one is, are you alright? And that makes me feel like I'm going to die, like in that panic attack, like I'm going to die if you say that to me because if, you, if you're not sure of yourself as the person who is essentially quote unquote normal, um, if you're not sure that I'm okay, then I'm not going to be sure that I'm okay because I am vulnerable in this state of mind. So when someone has a panic attack, if you are listening to this and you do not have mental health issues, don't say those words. Please don't say those words. Be strong. 
Be the person that they want to look up to. Be the person that says, you're okay. You're, you're cool. We're cool here. We're going to get through this. You're going to, you're going to, tonight you're going to go upstairs. You're going to go to your room and you're going to watch Doctor Who. You're going to watch, I don't know, the fate, one of your favorite episodes, The Seeds of Doom. And everything is going to be cool. Happiness will return. And that is something that I've always said to myself from uh, about two years ago. I always say the quote, when I'm feeling down, happiness will return. Because happiness will always return. It will, nine o'clock will always come around. I'll have had my shower. I'll be watching Doctor Who. Happiness will return. And even if I'm a little bit anxious watching Doctor Who at nine o'clock, I'm still happy because I'm watching Doctor Who and that's what I love. And for you guys, it might be something else. It might be the promise of um, going for a meal somewhere. However, that to me would be a very, very big anxiety thing. But for you guys, it might work. Uh, for you guys, it might be watching a diff the promise of watching a different TV show or um, do doing some exercise or something like that. But the person who is looking, is on looking at the person who is having a panic attack needs to be someone strong. And if they are not someone strong, the panic attack is just going to get worse. Now, what I mean by strong is I don't mean um, aggressive. I don't mean, um, I don't mean too assertive. Um, I don't necessarily even mean an alpha male. But what I mean is just someone who can make make you feel like everything's going to be okay and and assure you actually assure you that everything is going to be okay in that moment because you're not sure yourself whether it will be so you need someone to assure you that it will be because it is going to be okay no one's ever died of a panic attack it's as far as i'm aware anyway that's what my doctor told me uh, and that's what countless people have told me actually so it's cool, everything's going to be fine, you're going to, happiness is going to return, so I just wanted to touch on that, I'm sorry that I rambled for about seven minutes on that, so next we're going to go over to Quote Corner, and uh, I've just literally gone on the internet and uh, just picked out a quote, and I'm going to do this every week, and I think that maybe uh, some weeks I might actually put in here a quote that um, is by myself, Obviously, a, a quote that I've actually uh, made up myself. I've got quite a few of those. So I might do that. But we're just going to go and we're just going to have a little inspiring quote just to help you through uh, the day, obviously. And just um, maybe give you a little bit of inspiration. So this one here, I've not wrote down who actually did this one. So I apologize. But I will write down next week um, who did the quote. But the quote is, too many of us are not living our dreams because we are living in our fears. And I think that that is very, very powerful. I think that, especially with anxiety, depression, things like that, we are living in our fears. We, we do that day to day. And some days will be brilliant victories and we won't have any anxiety. We won't have much depression. We'll look at the world like it's so full of colour. There's so much possibility. But let me ask you, why can't we have that every day? The answer is, we can have that every day. It's only us who determine whether we see grey outside that window or whether we see a rainbow. Now, I understand that it is incredibly hard to change that grey to a rainbow, but it can be done. It can be done. I'm not going to tell you how it can be done because that's different for everyone. Um, for me personally, it relates again to, to watching Doctor Who or doing things relating to Doctor Who, hearing quotes from Doctor Who and things like that because that's what I get my greatest motivation in my life from. For you, it might be something different. It might not be a TV show. It might actually be a person. It might be someone you look up to or so, a friend of yours who can help you out of that. But at the same time, I don't want to talk about that too much because it's always got to be you at the end of the day who makes that choice to get out of that and to to enjoy the day but sometimes a person can actually help you do that um, alongside you helping yourself um, and even what I found is just when I'm walking down the street and I'm not feeling too good I live in a fairly small village I know a fair few of the residents of the village and when I'm walking down the street and I see someone who I know even just saying hi to them 
the simplest thing, just saying hello, can make the world of difference. Now, again, I understand if you've got social anxiety, that might not be the case for you. So obviously, you're going to have to find something else. But there's always things out there, no matter how bad you've got. And I will just say this as well. At one point in my anxiety, I thought I was the best person in the world at feeling anxiety. So hopefully that will say to you that you're not alone in this. Um, and if your anxiety is really bad, trust me, I've had it just as bad. I have had, I'm not going to say I've had it worse. I don't want to belittle the feelings that you feel. Um, but I will say I've had it just as bad. Um, and I honestly thought at one point, every day I would wake up and I just thought to myself, I must be the best person in the world um, at having anxiety because I'm just anxious all the time. I don't even know how I'm still here because I'm just anxious. So I just wanted to leave you with that. I mean, it, I don't want that to be a destructive thing. I don't want that to um, make you feel uh, negative in any way. Um, but it's just, I just wanted to reveal that because I want you to know that, look, it's been bad for me. It's been terribly bad for other people. You're not alone in this. If you feel that, obviously, your anxiety is really bad, there is a way to, to manage that and slowly get out of it. Now, I don't think there's a way to completely stop it because we're all going to have some natural anxiety in our life. But there are definite ways, coping strategies, professional help, uh, things that you can do online like um, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, if you don't want to actually see a counselor or anything like that or a doctor. Um, there are ways that we can, we can manage this and we can fight it together. And as I mentioned, I'm still suffering. I'm no way near out of this. So obviously you know, we can we can all help each other. But I'm finally just going to go on to the last segment. Now, I haven't actually got any questions today. So I apologize about that. Other than the one I talked about before, it wasn't really a question. But uh, someone just obviously mentioned about sharing coping strategies. So what I would like, obviously, I'm going to round off the podcast now. But obviously, next episode, we're going to structure this a little bit better. Um, obviously, hopefully, I'll have a few more questions. As I say, if you'd like to get in touch, drop me some questions, whether they're on a personal level to you, whatever whatever it may be. I've not actually thought of the topic for next week. However, we are going to go through the topic um, earlier than we do the questions. So the questions are going to be separate uh, from the topic. But as I say, um, if you've got any questions relating to reselling and mental health, then please do get in touch with me on my Instagram, on my Facebook page, and uh, we can have a chat about it. If you do not want things going on the podcast, I will not be putting them on the podcast. If you are happy to share your stories, happy to share your coping mechanisms, happy to share what um, what is hard for you within your reselling uh, with relation to your mental health issues, um, then obviously you can share those and I will... Um, obviously talk about those in the next podcast but as I say please do get in touch with a few questions so then we can pad this section out next time and I can obviously um, talk a, a little bit talk for a little bit about these questions now obviously I'm not a professional in any sense of a word I'm not going to be here to give you uh, complete advice on what will get you out of your anxiety I'm simply sharing my own experience, so please do bear that in mind when you are giving me questions. I'm not going to be able to give you the answers you seek about uh, life and the universe or about um, whatever it may be about how to get out of your reselling. The reason I say life and the universe is because I um, have a big... Um, a big need to find out all the questions that no human can answer for me. So unfortunately, I can't answer those questions for you. But um, I can, you know, I can help you with certain things. And I can answer the questions in relation to my own experience and how I've dealt with things and hopefully give you an answer that may help you in some way. But this podcast is just to help us help build a community of people who are maybe suffering a little bit at the moment and uh, obviously can get a little bit 
of enjoyment out of he hearing other people's experiences and uh, getting help from each other so i'll leave it there guys we're coming up to the 45 minute mark i'm thinking that these podcasts are going to be anywhere between half an hour to an hour um so an hour obviously being sort of maximum half an hour being maybe a slower a slower episode if we don't get many questions or we don't really have much of a, a meaty topic to get through um but i'd just like to say you know take care of yourself guys you know if you feel like uh, things are getting on top of you take a little bit of a break know what your coping strategies are try and find uh, the coping strategies that work for you and and just enjoy life try and enjoy life uh, in what it's worth i know that can be quite hard to do as someone with uh, a mental health issue but try and enjoy life try and uh, do things that you want to do and uh, yeah try not to live in fear too much but I know that sometimes that happens and sometimes when you do live in fear for a day it can drain you and you need a little bit of a break so always do take that break and uh, then you can get back at it the next day so I'll leave it there guys if you did enjoy this podcast please do leave a like down below throw any comments or questions down below or, as I say, get in touch via my Facebook or Instagram. You can also support the show on Patreon if you would like to. But there is no need for you to do that. I just wanted to mention that that, that is an option there. Um, and I will leave it there. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next video.